writing code to generate procedural terrain that can look something like this is really fun and surprisingly easy to get started with. In this video, I'll teach you how to make your own procedural terrain using JavaScript and the p5.js library, but these techniques can be applied to any language and any framework. So to start out, let's say that we have a 600 by 600 empty canvas and we want to make our procedural terrain within that space. We need a way to figure out how to place the different types of terrain within the canvas. So maybe we want water, sand, grass, whatever types you want, we need to figure out how to actually position those within the empty space. And we also want the number of possibilities of how the terrain can look to be infinite so that it's always different every time we refresh the page. You can do this using something called noise. And for this project, I use Perlin noise. Even if you've never used noise for a project like this before, you've probably seen it in some form like in the static on old TV sets. In the context of graphics, you can think of noise as a bunch of random or pseudo random numbers that can be used to generate useful things like images, textures, and height maps for procedural terrain like we're doing for this project. So if you wanted to make a completely random noise-based texture quickly, you could just call math.random for each pixel in our canvas, so each x and y coordinates, and then set the color of that pixel between white and black depending on the value of math.random. And here's some code to do that here. And this is the result of running that code. As you can see, it's not very terrain-like. It is more like TV static or something like that. So this looks bad because each pixel is completely random in its value and it doesn't form any shapes that look interesting. But this is where Perlin noise shines and why it's used so often for terrain generation like this. Unlike completely random noise, Perlin noise is a gradient noise that produces a more natural sequence of numbers where each value is connected to the ones that are nearby it. So we can try switching this to using Perlin noise by using p5.js's noise function, which uses Perlin noise and it takes it in X X, Y, or X, Y, Z coordinates, depending on what coordinate space you're working within, and returns a value from zero to one based on that coordinates. So if we just call the noise function for each X, Y coordinate in our canvas, it looks like this. This looks more interesting than just completely random noise, but it definitely doesn't look like terrain yet but it's actually really simple to get it to look a lot better. All you have to do is effectively zoom in on the noise by looking at values that are closer together in the noise. So to do that, we can just divide X and Y both by a zoom factor. Right now, I'm dividing by a hundred. And then you get something that looks like this, which right away looks a lot more like actual terrain. So this essentially zooms in on the noise by looking at values that are closer together within Perlin noise. So in our initial loop, we were looking at one, 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 two, two, two coordinates like that. But if we're dividing by the zoom factor, which is hundred right now, we are now looking at 0 0.01, 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 0 0.02. And those values are all way closer together, which means that we're getting back noise values that are also closer together, which gives us a much more smooth gradient when we are using it to determine colors on our canvas. If we set the noise seed here, I can get it so that it generates the same noise every time I refresh the page. And then you can mess around with the zoom factor to see what it's really doing. So if we just zoom in a little bit by increasing the zoom factor, you can see that it is slightly zooming in on the noise, cutting out parts, but making it a bit more smooth and 110 looks like this. You could zoom out a bit to 80 and see that's the same exact texture, but we are now just zooming out a bit and seeing more of the noise. You could zoom out even more and get something like this, or you could zoom in a ton, let's say to a thousand, and you just get kind of a gradient look because the values that we are passing into the noise function are all very close together. So there is not that much change between them. So now that we have this black and white representation of Perlin noise, how do we actually turn it into looking more like real terrain? Well, it's actually pretty simple. Instead of just setting the color between white and black, depending on that noise value, we can instead check what the noise value is and set different colors for different ranges of that noise value. You can think of the noise value for each particular coordinate as a height for the terrain at that coordinate. And we can associate different types of terrains with different heights. So maybe we want water, sand, grass, and trees, but you can do whatever you'd like. And maybe water is the lowest. So values closer to zero are water and closer to one are trees. And then we can use that to set up our terrain. So in this code here, if the noise value is less than 0.4, I'm setting the terrain color to blue. If it's between 0.4 and 0.5, I'm setting it to yellow for sand. If it's between 0.5 and 0.7, I'm setting it to green for grass. And if it's above 0.7, then I'm setting it to kind of a dark green for trees. And this is what doing that looks like. 
And as you can see, it is already looking a lot more like terrain. And if I just refresh the page, it generates something a bit different each time. And it's already pretty fun as it is. Now, of course, there is no right or wrong way to set up these different heights and colors. You can do whatever you'd like to generate the terrain that you'd like. I just found that these noise values work for what I was going for but just definitely play around with it and have fun with it. So now here I've just chosen some better colors, not just the primary colors. And if I save and update it, it looks like this. And I am digging how this train is looking. So now this procedural train is starting to look quite cool and you could totally stop here, but there are a few more things you can do to make your train look a bit more interesting and a bit better. You make things look a bit less flat, pretty easily by adding gradient colors for the different types of terrain. And this looks like this, which looks a lot more interesting, I think personally, than the more flat version. I particularly like how the water looks. It looks a lot more water-like with that added gradient. And here are some more examples of how this gradient looks. It is really starting to look cool. The idea with this is that for each type of terrain, you can go between two different colors depending on how close you are to the minimum height or maximum height for that individual terrain type. So for example, for water, you could have the lowest water, the deepest water be darker blue and a little bit higher water that's more shallow be a lighter blue and blend between those colors smoothly so that it looks natural. So to do that, I made a terrain type class that stores a minimum and maximum height for the terrain as well as a minimum color and a maximum color for the terrain. And then I create in the setup function here, all the different types of terrain that I want in my map. So water, sand, grass, and trees. And here you can see I'm passing in the minimum and maximum height for each type of terrain as well as the two different colors that I want to blend between. So now this updated draw function here, I am just checking the noise value against each terrain type height and then getting the appropriate color for that terrain at the current noise value with this function get terrain color. Get terrain color uses the p5 lerp color function to return a color that is between the minimum and maximum color for the current terrain based on how close the noise value is to the minimum or maximum height of that terrain. For this again, really you just have to mess around with the values to get a look you want. There is no right or wrong. You can do totally different gradients, totally different colors than I did here. You can add more different colors, more different types of terrain. There are so many options and it is totally up to what you personally prefer. So now the terrain is looking really good and you could totally leave it there if you want, but there is another small thing you can do to make it look even more interesting. If you look closely at the train, you might notice that it looks pretty smooth. All of the edges are kind of rounded and not so bumpy or detailed. With Perlin noise to make it look a bit more interesting and detailed, you can actually combine multiple layers of the noise at different frequencies and amplitudes. With this, each layer of noise is referred to as an octave, like in music, and it adds an additional level of detail to the noise. So in our case, to add more detail with P5, it's really easy to add more octaves. You can just use the provided noise detail function, which takes in first a parameter that says the number of octaves that you want to include in your noise, and then also a fall off, which is how much less each subsequent octave contributes to the overall shape of the noise. So back in our procedural train, this is what it looks like with the default of four octaves of noise, but let's see what happens if we tweak that. Let's say that we just add this line here, noise detail, and set it to nine octaves and see what that looks like here. And you can see it looks a lot more detailed, a lot more bumps, and just a much more interesting shape. Now, like everything, definitely mess around with this noise value to get something that you like. As you add more layers of noise, it does get more computationally expensive. And I find that there is a fall off of how much it actually looks different. So for me, I found the sweet spot was around nine, but definitely try different values and see what works for the aesthetic you're going for. You'd also, of course, try going lower than four. So this is four levels of detail here. Let's set it to three. So it gets even more smooth looking, set it to two. Very smooth looking, set it to one. And yeah, that's not really going to work as well. But yeah, just mess around with the value and see what you personally like. I'm just refreshing the page now to get some different iterations on the noise and it is looking pretty cool. Also again, feel free to mess around with the zoom factor. It will give a much different look. Like if I zoom into 200, then it looks pretty different. And you can also zoom out a bunch as well. Let's go to 50. And now it looks like more of like a whole world. It is really fun how you can just mess around with these numbers and get something that looks very different. So now at this point, if you've been following along, you now have procedural terrain that looks awesome and you can experiment with all the different values, the zoom value, 
the different colors, the gradients, the different amounts of different types of terrain. So you could add mountains and snow, things like that. There is a lot you can experiment with. Now, there are a couple of other things I tried adding to my terrain. One of them is zooming and panning. So I can actually zoom in on my procedural terrain map and zoom out as well to get a different perspective on the map. And I can also pan with the arrow keys and you can see a whole lot of your map. I mean, it's infinite, so you can go on forever if you wanted to. And I'll have the code to do that in the example on GitHub. It's not too complicated, but it is really cool that with how Perlin Noise works, you can actually just add zooming and panning quite easily and see different perspectives on your procedural map. Another thing you could do and that I've implemented here is you can add raycast based shadows to your terrain so that as you can see here, there are shadows based on the direction of light. When I click, the direction of light changes and it changes how my terrain looks. And I feel like this effect is really cool, but it was pretty tricky to implement. So if you're interested in a full video going over how I implemented this, let me know. I might need to make sure I understand it myself more fully before I do that. But I love this effect and I think it gives it a really cool look. To illustrate how much this technique changes the terrain, this is what it looks like without shadows. And then this is the same terrain but with the shadows and yeah, it looks drastically different. The possibilities of what you can do using this technique are really quite endless, I guess, like Pearl and Noise itself. For instance, you can take the same exact idea of generating a height map based on Pearl and Noise and bring it into a 3D context like this. And it's fun to mess around with the different values here and zoom in and out. And yeah, you can do this pretty easily. It's basically the same idea. I might make a different video on this in the future once I get down my 3D skills a little bit better, but I've had a lot of fun playing around with this myself. And just with Perlin Noise in general, there are so many different things you can do with it. So yeah, I hope you have fun experimenting with procedural terrain and Perlin Noise. I'll have all of the code I used for these examples on my GitHub and I'll have that linked in the description. Please let me know if there's anything you'd be interested in seeing next on this channel. I'd really appreciate your thoughts. I've been personally diving into this procedural terrain generation for the first time over the last couple of weeks. I haven't done it before and I've been having a lot of fun with it. So I might do some more videos in that vein, but I'm not sure yet. I might just experiment with a wide variety of different things. So yeah, let me know if there's anything in particular you'd like to see me cover. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.